In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean a carburetor on a Kohler 149cc engine. Coming up now. Rudy here from Take a Bath Productions with another video to help you save some money through how-to videos. How you doing everybody? On this channel I like to do how-to videos of different sorts, repairing lawnmowers, some vehicle repair, amateur radio repair, stuff of that nature. Um, anyway, today we're going to dive into this carburetor that uh, doesn't look too bad from what I can tell, but I think it's just a little bit gummed up. So we're going to show you how that's uh, taken apart and uh, cleaned out, put it back together, and hopefully she'll run. Okay, let's dive right in. Obviously, we're going to start with the air cleaner. I've already taken this off, and some jackass ran this with no air filter in there, and you can see what happened to it. So I'm going to have to clean that up. We're going to use a 10 millimeter socket to take these bol uh, nuts off in this uh, bolt right here. I'm just going to use my trusty uh, Milwaukee Impact because it's faster and I like it. Now in this engine there's a little spacer behind this bolt so make sure you don't lose that and there's also a couple of hoses connected to the uh, air cleaner box. So sp spacer is right there on the end of the bolt. So just put that back, and there's another line connected down at the bottom here. You probably can't see that on camera, but it's right there. Okay, carburetor's loose, but nope, you can't take it off yet. You're going to need a Torx T20 to, to, uh, to take those bolts out. Start over here. Wait a minute. There we go. It's good if you have a magnetic screwdriver on those. This one here is a little tricky to get off. You just kind of have to pull the carburetor out and bend the Z like that. And then just leave that to the side. Now this one here, same thing, T20. Notice these two screws have a little collar on them, and the other two that I took out don't. That collar goes with the thickness of that plastic right there, so that way when you put it back you don't get the screws reversed and put the wrong ones in the wrong holes. I use a little curved pair of pliers to take off these little clamps. They work pretty well. Let you get in there. This is the fuel line. If it's stubborn, you can take a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry against it to push it that way. And that goes to this diaphragm. And this just goes right in here. And you just kind of got to play with that, turn it at an angle to get it out, so we're going to set that aside. The throttle, turn the throttle like that so that this slot lines up with the, the rod and just lift it up. And then this little spring, well, being stubborn on me, there we go. And the carburetor's free and clear. Again, this is a 10 millimeter socket right here. Pull the pin out of the uh, float. Make sure you keep the needle handy there because you're going to need that again. There's a little jet down inside of there that's got to be pulled out. I don't know if you can see it right there on the camera, but uh, let me find a screwdriver to, uh, to tackle that with. Okay, just need to remove the jets out of the middle here. 
just a regular screwdriver. There they both came out. Um, if this one doesn't come out, search, uh, look in here, and about right in the middle, you'll see a little brass uh, piece sticking up. That'll be the end of that. Just kind of push it down, and then do one of these numbers, and it'll come right out. So um, this has got these little holes in it. I usually just take one of these, a little torch, uh, torch set, and uh, probably going to need the smallest one to clean this out. It's kind of got to ream through each one. That's you know, pretty tedious. I'm going to hit them all that way, and then I'm just two sets. Hit them first. Could be a little piece of trash in there. And the, uh, the middle is bigger. Probably not going to find nothing through the middle, but it's still a good idea to, uh, to go through. And then after you do that, I would just give that a little squirt through there. Get the second set. And then hit it with some air. to do the same thing with this one. It's too big. Go through the middle. Blow. Put it back. This end goes up. What? This end goes up. Make sure you put the jet with the uh, screwdriver access to the outside so you can get it. And screw it back in. There we go. That's got her. Don't have to be real tight because you'll wind up stripping the uh, the brass part of it that the screwdriver engages to. Just kind of go through here and look for any little portholes. This is just carburetor cleaner. You can buy this stuff pretty much anywhere. Any little portholes you see, blow through them. And up here too. like that, like that, look around, I don't see any more, so now take your air and blow through, Um, if you have any corrosion like this, which you probably will if you're doing this job, I usually take a piece of steel wool and just kind of clean that a little bit, you know, get the corrosion out the best you can. If you have a little Dremel tool with a wire wheel, that would work good too. In fact, I have one of those. I might have to get it here in a minute. I 
clean this groove out where the uh, gasket goes in there. I'm going to try to reuse that gasket, but if the bolt leaks, then I'm not going to be able to. But we're going to try it. I'm going to do my steel wool trip trick on this gasket. Let's see if it kind of helps it. It doesn't look too good. So I'm afraid it might not might not seal, but we're going to try it anyway. You know what? We're just going to try it. That seal goes right in that groove right there. Don't forget to put that back now because going to leak like a sieve. I'm going to do a little uh, clean up on this part of the... Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my wire wheel and clean that up. I have a bench grinder with a wire wheel. Okay, got this cleaned up a little bit also. Just trying to give it the best chance to not leak. Okay, let's put the, uh, the float back or it's uh, not going to work too good. Make sure that needle is in there. Put the pin back. Just kind of center it. It's not that critical. Okay, when you put the bowl back, obviously make sure your gasket is in there. But the way that I turn these is like this. All right, it sits on the motor this way, okay? This is the front of the motor here. I turn that screw to the front. It doesn't matter, but if you do this in the winter time, you can take that screw out and drain the bowl so that this won't happen again, but it doesn't really matter if you don't want to do that or you forget. All right, let's, uh, let's put it back on the motor. Got the carburetor getting ready to put back. We've reset the mower and just uh, slide it back up over uh, over those studs right there. That's all you got to do. And we're going to get the uh, the linkages hooked up. This particular one here, you got to put it on like this, where it kind of feels like it's going to be upside down, but then you got to turn it over. It might be a little tricky, but that's what you got to do. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera, but it is, it is a little bit of a fight to get that back in there. Thought I had it. There we go. Got it in there. And then this one goes here. Kind of, kind of got to get it at a straight angle. I don't know why they made that kind of hard to get in there, but they did. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and tighten those down. Remember that this one takes the screws that doesn't have a collar here. Throttle linkage, remember line that, uh, there's a little groove in there, you gotta line up with the rod and then just push it down. The spring. Okay, let's hook the fuel line up while we can get to it. Putting 
diaphragm back that goes on the lower kind of a groove right through here this yellow hose is not supposed to be yellow the factory one is black and um, this is what I had to replace it with this is a fuel line for a model airplane but it's gonna work just fine because it was free and I'm cheap goes right there all right everybody's hooked up oh that's working better I don't know what was going on with that a minute ago all right let's see we're ready to put back the air box I did clean this thing up a little bit it looked like hell I just didn't like the way it looked remember the spacer goes behind that just like that and then of course it screws into into here this hose here this hose goes here and that's got to stay above the fuel line or it won't fit right okay slide that back over make sure your spacer didn't fall out and then put this big hose right here with an impact careful not to start real slow otherwise you could cross thread those real easy all right I did get a new air filter there's no way I was gonna do that and there we go all right guys that's how you do a carburetor on a Kohler 149 cc engine or that's how you clean it anyway I didn't replace any parts I just cleaned it and put it back hopefully it's gonna work right I believe it will if you like this video click the like button and subscribe because I come out with videos like this from time to time thanks for watching